This story is brought to you by tapeatale.com. Uh, the date is uh, September 5, 2015. Uh, I remember my father's walk when he came up to me. And he whispered so that my mom could hear. He said, I'm BP check, but the reading ka level is not coming. And uh, I thought to myself, you know what, I've always been ready for this moment. That now we just need confirmation. It's amazing that about just one hour before this, my mom and I were having that same debate. Ki go hospital le jana chahiye, ki nahi le jana chahiye. Should we take that over bloated carcass that his body and life had become? And you know, again, we were debating, we'll take him to the hospital, what's that up, 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 what's that up. And uh, this had happened at least four times in the past two years. The latest that happened was in June, uh, the same two consecutive months where my comedy earnings were almost negligible. And the hospital bill was also around 1.5 lakhs. Uh, it also happened earlier when he was in the hospital for three weeks. This happened when I just quit my job and simultaneously realized I'm no longer on the comedy store lineup. So it kind of got used to things happening this way. But I figured, okay, today all these things are going to come to an expected halt. And I think comedy sometimes finds you in the weirdest ways because just at that moment I received a call from an event manager for a corporate comedy show. I remember my head thinking, uh, like, you know, if he's alive, then we'll probably need the money, I should do the show. But if he's not, obviously I can't do the show. And in my head I'm thinking, you know, should I call up this guy? What will be his expression if I tell him, you know what, um, can I just get back to you on my availability? I first need to check if daddy's there or not. Comedy does find you in the strangest ways. But I don't want this story to be about his ravaged years, you know, when uh, his kidney failure and dialysis had taken away the man who he loved and admired a lot. Uh, in some ways, it also affected his memory and comprehension. So, in the craziest ways, he used to call my nephew Ambuj, a name that we have never heard before. But there were better times in a different life, uh, you know, when he was the center of our uh, family's universe. Because he took up everyone's attention, you know, he was the one that everybody focused on. And uh, even our lives and moods actually kind of floated according to his moods, because he was clinically diagnosed with bipolar disorder and we found later on. And uh, our lives pretty much revolved entirely around his moods and how things went. In some ways, it was like uh, reporting to a crazy boss, but who was also benevolent and dosed up on antidepressants. But uh, there are happy memories as well. Um, I remember the one time I was watching the Sahara Cup for 1997, India was playing Pakistan. And the match was playing on TV, and I was pressing my dad's feet at the same time when suddenly an Indian wicket fell. I remember I was really upset, you know, I felt really bad about this, I was really angry, and my dad consoled me in the way an Indian father could. I said, 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 He came from a difficult background, and yet he managed to achieve a lot. He did his engineering from Pitts Pelami, his MBA from Ayam Ahmedabad. He was the oldest of 13 children. In fact, when he went to this uh, interview with the Goin Kaas, they asked him, Kaun se gaon se? He said, Thun Loth. He said, most people don't even graduate from that village. Aap mein MBA Ayam Ahmedabad se kar liya. Fuck it, just come for the job from tomorrow. Uh, we always appreciated that, you know, he had to rise from almost nothing. In 1986, when he had his first kidney failure, there was no financial or family support. But he managed to rise up again uh, from the ashes in some way and, uh, you know, recover and get back. We're always proud of the fact that in the South Bombay building that we stay in, he was the only first generation person to buy a house there. So life has been difficult for him and he wasn't helped by the fact that the only thing he inherited from his father were debts to pay off. And he had an evil stepmom who would put even screen stepmoms to shame. I don't think he ever really recovered entirely from the trauma that he faced by dealing with this evil stepmom. Just to give you an example, one time the stepmom, when he was like eight years old, went up to him and said, Tumari asli maa ki maata mere andar aagi. Par wode uske saare kapde ho, zewar rakhe ho, us mujhe dehne. It's kind of like imagine your iPhone 7 gets demonically possessed, which upgrade me on as I want to work. So he managed to do brilliantly because of all of this, but uh, the medications that were helping his kidney were also taking his mind slowly. In some ways, I think it was a bit like Iron Man, you know, and the device that's saving your life is also slowly taking it away. But in this case, um, there's no studio wheel for sequels, so there was no incentive to keep the character alive. I'll be honest, I had a difficult relationship with my father. Because in the first half of my life, he was my hero, he was my guru, he was my mentor. I used to think he's the most amazing person on earth. I used to favor me blatantly over my sister to the extent he used to piss off both my mom and sister. But uh, our relationship started deteriorating when his mind started going southwards, the business ideas got crazy, when the financial troubles got worse. So I started drifting away from him, and in some way the child had grown up and I started moving away. Uh, as things got worse, our roles reversed, I became the guy who had to take charge, become the man of the house. 
and you know put food on the table. While well, my father became the child who needed all the attention, medical and otherwise. I'll be honest, I wasn't able to give him all the attention because sometimes I was busy trying to put food on the table and surviving. But it tells me that even when, he was, when I was 28 years old, in his dreams he used to still see me as a child. So I think somewhere he always saw me as a child even in his dying breath. I'll be honest, it's been about a year and a half now. And we realize that the person we really grieve for is not the person who died. I think that's something we were ready for. The person we really grieve for is the person we lost a long time ago. Because the demise was so slow, we never acknowledged it and we never grieved over it. Now, one of the ways I'm trying to address it is I'm writing a new stand-up comedy show. It's called Papa Kehtete, to try and remember some of the happiest memories of his life. I'll just leave you with this. Um, the first time I tried some lines from Papa Kehtete, it was during the final of the Indo-Pak Champions Trophy. And we all know India was losing badly. I think at one point we were like seven wickets down and you know it was all over. But I'm sure if my dad was around, I know what he would have said. He said, Vicky, abhi bhi bol raho, pair the baad is shagging,